Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. No, good evening. I'm so used to saying good morning. It's nice to see people here. Thank you for coming. Um, everybody have a candle? Okay, we got our ushers passing out candles, and uh, it's a pleasure to have everyone here and uh, say Merry Christmas. And because there isn't the usual 200 people here, uh, at the end of the service, we'll pass the light uh, right in the pews and try to dim the lights a little bit. I think uh, it will remind us of the power of the light of uh, Bethlehem. So let us uh, begin to worship, and we gather in the midst of the darkness to remember that in the same darkness over 2,000 years ago, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And we gather to worship that event and that word. Uh, and we begin as we sing, uh, as we have our introit, and then we'll have our first carol. Isn't he beautiful, beautiful, isn't he, with a priest, son of God, isn't he, isn't he wonderful, wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, isn't he, isn't he, isn't he, isn't he? And our opening carol is number 278. We'll do verses 1, 3, and 4. Thank you. 
Here the prophet Isaiah foretells the coming of the Messiah to the Hebrew people. We recognize the references to the people of Israel held so long in the bondage of Egypt. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation. Thou hast increased their joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, thou hast broken as in the day of Midian. For all the armor of the armed man in tumult and the garments rolled in blood shall be for burning as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The next hymn is 277. Oh, an anthem. Helpless 
And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to the virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And now the thing is 277. <laughs> and it's hark the herald angels sing. I even know that. <laughs> share our Christmas offerings.
Now it came to pass in those days, there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to enroll themselves, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, up from the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to enroll himself with Mary, who was betrothed to him, being great with child. And it came to pass that while they were there, the days were fulfilled that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds in the same country, abiding in the fields, keeping watch by night over their flock. And an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men in whom he is well pleased. And they came with haste and found both Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known concerning the saying which had been spoken to them about this child by the angel. And all that heard it wondered at the things which were spoken unto them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these sayings, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, even as it was spoken unto them. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And when Herod the king heard it, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written through the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, land of Judah, art in no wise least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come forth a governor who shall be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod privily called the wise men and learned of them exactly what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search out exactly concerning the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word that I also may come and worship him. And they, having heard the king, went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over the young, where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they offered unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Uh, this is the pa last passage is taken from John. And... Um, it is always one of the most challenging and yet is probably the most powerful in all of the New Testament. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness has never mastered it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness to that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. I was just notified by the uh, commissioner of baseball that we batted out of order. Uh, so I apologize for that, but um, it seems like nothing is the way it's supposed to be. Even if, uh, if I read the uh, bulletin, I think more carefully, I would have uh, not uh, forced Paul to read three things in a row, but nobody reads like he does. Uh, and on Christmas Eve, it's always a treat to have him. Thank you, Paul, that was, that was just great. And a lot of people deserve some thanks here tonight. Scott Hunter. Uh, arrived here, I think about quarter of seven, and just last night he called me and he had managed to get uh, the light uh, that we will light our candles with tonight that originated on the spot where traditional, uh, traditionally historians believe uh, the manger was in Bethlehem, uh, which is now a big fancy church called the Church of the Nativity. And uh, traditionally the Boy Scouts uh, worldwide, bring the light over in an airplane and it's distributed through various countries, including ours. And, and uh, for the last several years, Scott has done a wonderful job of getting it for us. This year was a little trickier. The scouts weren't going to do it, but he thought he knew some people that kept that flame going all year long. Uh, but I guess they finally reneged and the scouts did bring um, uh, the candlelight over to um, JFK Airport in New York, and then I, uh, it flew into Boston, I think, or somebody went down and got it. I'm not sure which, but Scott uh, brought it here tonight about quarter of seven. So uh, the light that you will have your candles lit with um, originated uh, in the town where Jesus uh, was born. The music. Um, we miss the choir that usually sings tonight. They were going to sing some things from the uh, cantata, which they did such a wonderful job with the other night. But our accompanist is not able to be with us tonight, so Betsy's playing the carols and doing a wonderful job. And Sam and Lynn make a wonderful duet, so we're very honored to have them. Uh, then we also need ushers, and we have uh, Jim Gooden, Jim Federer, and Lydia Peake, who would be singing, but since she's not singing with the choir, she's ushering as well. So at, at the conclusion, when we're singing um, Silent Night, 
uh, they'll come up and um, and uh, get candles lit and then go along and uh, they're not overcrowding in here at the moment, so we can pass the light uh, in the sanctuary. So that will be uh, very nice. So I hope I didn't miss anyone that I meant to thank because we've had a lot. Oh, Paul, Paul Sitak, who's making this uh, available to people virtually as well, uh, as he does every week, and he does a terrific job of that and puts a lot of time into that. I just want to say one thank oh, you. Oh, yes. Because I just want to say thank you to the choir who is oh. out in amongst all of you and who stepped up when the introit started, and that was a surprise too. <laughs> so surprise, and they jumped in. So thank you to my choir who um, is here tonight and filling in and being a supportive role in our congregation. So thank you to my choir. And I'll tell you one thing. Um, that lady does a lot for this church. Thank you, Sam. That was, that was wonderful. And the music is always wonderful. Yeah. Uh, also, Patty Garrity deserves thanks for putting the bulletins together. We had some leftovers uh, that we uh, used, so the covers don't necessarily look very Christmassy. Uh, if you didn't get to the cantata, and you want, there are some cantata programs on the table in the back, on the table in the, uh, in the vestry here as well, if people would like to get them. It's been a, it's a very confusing week. I mean, in the middle of the week, we weren't sure what we were going to do, and we didn't know how many people would come, and thanks to all of you for coming out tonight, and we'll see if anybody comes at 11 o'clock. Uh, I hope they do, and uh, we're also going to have a drive-by candle lighting, which is a lot better than a drive-by shooting. I'll drive-by candle lighting um, at 8.15 for half an hour if anybody wants to uh, get some candles lit in their cars, but they're a little hesitant to come in. It's been a, um, a, a kind of a chaotic week, and the, the COVID numbers aren't great this week, and a lot of folks, uh, I think I know more people that have tested positive this week than I have all during the last two years. Um, then I had a good friend uh, who um, had an accident, which was very sad. Uh, uh, he fell into an upholstery machine, if you can believe that. Um, but uh, it, it turned out okay because he's he's recovered. So <laughs> the jokes aren't necessarily any better on Christmas Eve. Okay. Well, I guess we've covered that. So, okay. <laughs> Christmas is many things. And one thing it is is joyous, even if the jokes are bad. It, uh, but it's a, it's a time of, uh, especially Christmas Eve, I think, is a time of memories. The old ones uh, that go back to when we were children, uh, waiting for Santa and and the folks we waited with, and, um, uh, and, and for younger people, it's, it's a time of making uh, new ones, as well as new ones for us older folks. It's a time of family, which uh, for many of us can be a very joyous, joyous time. Now, for some, uh, family can be painful um, or even non-existent. Uh, it's a mix. Um, uh, time can seem, uh, it's a time that, seems almost magical at times. Uh, the lights, uh, the other decorations, the wonderful music, um, the uh, strangers who say Merry Christmas on the streets. Uh, it's true if you're in a city at this time of year. You know, usually in a city, people don't say anything to each other. But in a big city, uh, I mean, I've been there at Christmas time, and people, people actually look up and, and will wish uh, people a Merry Christmas. The only other time a person spoke to me that I didn't know in New York City other than Christmas time um, was several years ago. I used to have these plaid pants that I used to wear. And <laughs> it was in the spring, and we were visiting our daughter down in New York City. We were out for a walk. The sidewalks were teeming with people. And all of a sudden, some fellow I'd never seen before is walking by me. He stops. He says, hey, wait a minute. He says, are you playing golf? And I said, uh, well, yes, actually, if you look down here, uh, a couple of blocks, my pa a caddy's trying to get through with the clubs. That's a true story. But anyway, people say, uh, Merry Christmas. 
and people help the less fortunate. I don't think there's any time uh, during the year that that is more true uh, than it is at Christmas. And we have traditions. The church candlelight service is a tradition. Uh, and as is our 11 o'clock candlelight service now, we added that several years ago, um, uh, our dog and I, uh, Abby is our dog, and, and I have a tradition of helping Santa uh, get my wife a, a strange present every year. And uh, Abby and I have conferred, and she'll get a strange present tomorrow. Um, time of wonderful parties, it's time of great meals, uh, time of special treats, uh, outings. You know, some people like to go out for a ride and see the uh, decorations uh, with the lights. Um, other people uh, sometimes uh, go to a local uh, performance of the Nutcracker or uh, perhaps a local production of uh, the Christmas Carol. Or I see Jim Roach is here, so any of his comedians that are appearing at the Rex Theater uh, uh, or the Palace, you should go. And uh, it's fun. And people that can uh, stand up uh, for more than five seconds uh, and like to skate or ski, uh, enjoy that. It's a special time. I think it is also fair to say that we live in a difficult time. Uh, the masks, uh, the vaccinations, uh, the anger that people have, it, it kind of reminds me of the, the first couple lines of uh, The Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, who also wrote that book as well as uh, several others, and he wrote A Christmas Carol. Uh, that, that book begins, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And I think in many ways that's true this year. Um, we live in a divided country. Um, in many ways, we live in a, a divided town. Um, there's a new surge in the COVID cases. Um, inflation is high. Anger is high. Distrust uh, is high. And yet, you know, Christmas, for all the, the splendid things we mentioned, is even more splendid and, uh, uh, than that. Because Christmas has the possibility of making our world better. The story itself has much to teach us. I mean, I think the main thing it teaches us is that God so loves the world. God so loves the world that's in some mysterious way, in the form not of a conquering, avenging God, uh, but in the form of an innocent helpless baby, God, in some special way, enters uh, the world and spends uh, a rather short, uh, in today's standards, uh, human lifetime uh, helping people, healing people, loving people, teaching people. And those of us who try to follow that little baby who became Jesus of Nazareth, uh, are inspired, and in that man, we see the truth of those words, God so loves the world. It's an incredible story. Common folks um, and foreigners are major players. Of course, they're all foreigners to us here in the United States. Jesus was not born in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, you have Mary, a young woman, perhaps as young as 13. You have an older fiance. Uh, Joseph, a carpenter by trade. You have shepherds. Uh, then you have wise foreign kings who, because, um, you know, there was no GPS in those days or any of these cell phones telling them how to get where they were going, they go to see a very nasty king who makes believe he's glad to hear about this new king being born. And then when they leave, tells them to be sure and stop on the way back, tell them where he is so he can send his soldiers to kill him. Um, very real story, but it's a very magical story. Um, the, it's the arrival on earth of the creator of all it is who comes to spend his human life loving and teaching and healing his children. So the light of Bethlehem that Scott brought to us uh, this evening 
in a very profound way um, tonight is full of possibilities. Possibilities. Has nothing to do with shopping, that's all done, and you know, I'm sure Christmas will be a great day for people, but that light uh, and the depth of meaning of it has the possibility of changing individual lives and of changing the world. It's a light of hope, hope that we can live here and now together and live as fully as we can and then live on forever in another dimension that we call heaven. It's a light of peace and justice. It's a light of good news. It's a light of um, uh, the possibility of ending uh, disagreements and feuds, be they personal uh, or be they on a big scale. I don't know of any other um, event that, was it, that is able to stop a world war in the midst of it but that's what happened during World War I on Christmas Eve when the, the Germans and the British stopped fighting each other, I think, and the French. And uh, much to the uh, annoyance and anger of their commanders, they stopped shooting and they walked out of their trenches uh, in a terrible war. I mean, those trenches were filled with dead bodies. And they came and, and sang carols together exchanged gifts together, um, exchanged cigarettes together. Everybody smoked in those days, I think. Um, and uh, for at least 24 hours, World War I stopped. That light gives us the possibility of forgiveness and the possibility of reconciliation. So we ask, who perhaps saw the possibilities the most? Who, who really looked and understood what this meant? Well, there was no person <laughs> more important in this whole Christmas process than a young girl named Mary. And um, when she's pregnant, she goes to see her cousin Elizabeth, who is also having a baby. And uh, Elizabeth's um, baby is John the Baptist, grows up to be John the Baptist. And um, when Mary gets together with Elizabeth, she comes out with an incredible statement. We now call it the Magnificat. It's in the first chapter of Luke. Here's what Mary said. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, Abraham, and to his posterity forever. Mary saw the possibility that that little child that she delivered on this evening uh, over 2,000 years ago could change people's lives individually and could change our world altogether. If we take seriously the possibility of making a better world and we learn to use the weapon that Jesus came to give us, it's a weapon that doesn't hurt anybody, it's a weapon called love, love. And there's no holiday that exemplifies love more than Christmas. So let me uh, close these probably uh, two long remarks um, uh, with a prayer written by a gentleman uh, by the name of uh, Pakarg Otwana, who is a uh, peacemaker in Northern Ireland where they know a few things about conflict and division. And let us pray with his words. 
God of the ground, in Mary's words. We hear a vision that could change the world. And though Mary's life, you change too. Give us the imagination to believe that even though we are not mighty, you can raise up songs from the dust that change powers for good. Because you did this through the yes of one woman. Let us bow together and join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we prepare to light our candles, let us join together in, um, in singing A Silent Night, number 253. And our ushers can come forward and uh, get with their candles, and we will light your candle as you're singing.
God bless us each and every one. And Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.